Uh, but I feel like just one or two things and I'll be up to 3.3, 3.4K. So. Nice, okay. Sounds good. So this game, you're the Luna. Yes. What do you, um, do you notice, like, there's a particular part of the game that you don't seem to find easy or that is kind of hard? Um, I don't know. I feel like I hit my timings, uh, for my level. Like, I feel like I do that well. Um, but, like, I'm, I'm able to farm, but I don't know. I, I'm not able to translate that as well. So maybe it's, I don't know, team fighting or mid-game decision-making, not sure. Showing up to fights or something? Okay. Sounds reasonable. Uh, is there anything you want to ask before we just start looking at it? No, let's let's do it. Okay. Um, so you're against a Tide, you have a stick, that makes sense. Probably... Sort of Invoker OD or some shit it's a position for. Yeah, it's invoker. I, like I, I Yeah. <laughs> it's a rip. What even happened to that creep? Did you just attack too early? Yeah, I kind of messed oh, up. Oh, you tried to, like, attack beam. I see. I see. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the cast point's a little long. First blood. Okay, so you finish the full wand. I don't hate that. I don't hate that. It'll be helpful this lane, I think. Especially because you took beam this lane. I think it makes a lot of sense. Nice. So here, this is a mistake before it happens like this is good like securing these creeps but here um what do you think about, do, you, do you have an idea of what i'm about to say yeah the the lane's about to push in hard yes exactly so yeah you want to like kind of recognize like tide is a is a in general we'll just push shoves the lane in you know and yeah. you as like a luna don't have any way to shove it back out so here i would just be like auto attacking um hit his melee creeps or you can even defensive aggro them up and like into your tower because as we see like right here you're like kind of trying to deny down although you're not really going to get those denies but like this is like this is like not that great for you yeah so if you'd like pulled some into the tower that's like good um because yeah now you have like eight creeps attacking you and you're a ranged hero all right this is like kind of it kind of works you just like lost a bunch of hp because of it like even though the yes. tide didn't do anything you see what i mean yeah. Yeah. Um, this is this is good. I would still be attacking your his creeps a little bit more, just to like try and keep it static a little bit outside your tower. But otherwise, it's good. Pretty good last hitting. I like it. Okay, so you're gonna buy component treads. Yeah, if that was like a melee creep, you could have defensive aggroed it, but because it wasn't, nothing you can really do. You can like defensive aggro, so it's like not close to him, but you can't really have a, a range. Yeah, I try to keep this out of tower here, but I got just get gone on by the invoker, so I had to go back. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. The only thing you can do differently here is just kind of preemptively notice that like, oh, if this guy's going to hit me, like I absolutely cannot stand here. Uh, unless your yeah. creeps are like right here, but they're like way back here. Uh, but yeah. you reacted appropriately just a little bit late. Took, like, a little bit of extra damage. Defense. Otherwise, it's pretty good. Oh, your lion salved you. That's nice. Good last hit. So, I like what you're doing so far. I'm not sure I love the second point in beam. I guess we'll see how it plays out. But you're just, you're not, like, harassing this guy to lane. Generally, the point of taking the point of taking a second point in beam is that you're like winning the lane and you're killing them, which is like not yeah, what's I, happening here. I honestly thought that was. I think I kind of misclicked there. Okay, well that's fine. Yeah, I, gen I generally don't take the second point in beam. I hold the skill point, but I think I kind of just misclicked there. Okay, no worries, no worries. Just want to make sure that wasn't like intentional or something. Yeah, because uh, I do see that a lot. Specifically on Luna, a lot of people like to level their beam. 
up in lane two points. It's not bad. Here, I would be, you've got like full mana, so like, once this guy like turns around, like I would just like beam him and like hit him, you know, right. just to like do some damage back because you've got full mana. Or, or like right. focus on beaming the invoker. Since you took this second point of beam, I'd like to see you use it to harass a little bit more. Maybe not the tide, but like if the invoker ever gets like close, like, you know, kind of just spam that shit on him. It's okay right. to just drain yourself of mana on a Luna, right? It's like not that big a deal to be at no mana. Right. So lane's getting a little tougher. They're definitely kind of zoning you out, but we got the lane equilibrium in good spots. You take your W. That's really good. Got your treads coming on, it looks like. Going Mask of Madness. Um, like reasonable. I'm definitely going to want you to get a Dragon Lance this game just because they have a Drow. I feel like you're going to need all the attack range you can get. Yeah. Um, but you can get the Mask of Madness first. Yeah, you're about to get level 6 here. So this is like, this is about, we'll see what you do. This is about where I'd want to see you like clearing these creeps fast and starting to rotate into the jungle. Like you've got treads, like especially, like if you were level 5, even if you were level 5 and you had 2 points of Moonglaives here, you could be doing it now. Yeah. Just to like, because you just don't want to engage this Tidehunter like at all anymore. You know what I mean? Yes. It's like, who cares? Like, you can't really stop him from farming. He can, like, fuck with you all he wants um, without you being able to do anything back. So, we'll see if you do that. Now that you're six. Oh, I definitely would have... I definitely would have taken the second point of Moonglaives. Right. If you already had the second point of Moonglaives, like, you didn't have Beam, I think it would be fine to put a third point in Lunar Blessing. I think it would... Or... Yeah, if you were, like, one, two, three, that would be fine. Uh, but yeah. given that you only have the the first point, the first point in Moonglaze kind of sucks. Um, it's only three bounces in the damage direction. Really, I, I don't know. The second point is like pretty value, I find. So just something right. to keep in mind when you're in this exact situation is like favor the favor the second point in Glaives over the third point in Lunar Blessing. Right. But okay, you're transitioning now. But like like here, the the Glaives would help more than the more than the Lunar Blessing. You know what I mean? Yes. Like the damage would have spread a lot better. Okay, I'm just like denying a little bit. I guess it's like okay. Like I just don't. Like this guy's already level six. Like you're not preventing some timing from him. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like my only concern here would be to like get out and then go hit more creeps. Uh, so you're you're, you're kind of doing it. You got the right idea, for sure. Just like some small efficiency things. And yeah, this fourth point in Lunar Blessing is like not good. This is bad. Um. The third point wasn't great, but this is like just bad. You you need yeah. more points in uh, Moonglaves to uh, amp your farm because like you don't need to pull this right. If you just had like a second point of Moonglaves, you just kill it. You just shred that camp. You know what I mean? Yeah. And like this camp, you, you just kill everything faster with the more, more points in Moonglaves. Uh, but okay, you're transitioning away to the jungle. The tide's like staticking, so this is like good. This is good farming rotation. I like that you chose to left the lane, leave the lane. Good good stack. I would like check the lane and see what's going on right now, like just through your camera and just like look and be like, okay, he's like kind of pushing it in right now. Like I would just note that and then move, make I think my way I back might have noticed that. Yeah, okay. I think I might have noticed. Yeah. Maybe you looked like right after I did. I don't know, wait. Oh, well, you sort of did. Maybe you looked on it. Maybe you saw the mini map it was pushing in. Yeah. It's good. Eat a tango. It's good. So you're going Manta. Um. Okay. I feel like I'm gonna want a Dragon Lance. If you go Manta, you're just gonna be really easily killable. We'll see what happens. All right, the Tide's not here. It's just an Invoker. This is good. I like this aggression and returning to lane. Oh shit, a Drow showed up. That's a rip. Good TP, nice. Wow, that was scary. I was not expecting him to show up. That was a good reaction. I liked what you were doing, and then they like showed up super fast. Yeah. I thought they were all going to be bottom still. It's good. Good shit. So you're farming back towards top. Going mid. 
These decisions matter a lot. So let's take a look at this again. So you killed this creep camp. Is profit a core? I is profit yeah, he's a, a mid profit. In a triangle. I see, I see. This neck is also your core. All right, I think what you did is fine. I think here maybe just like you'd want to go mid first before walking back, before walking to these other camps. Well, maybe not. Yeah. I guess this guy static did. I you'd want to check um, to clear mid because you do correctly go mid right here, um, but you're you're like walking the wrong way, so you're just it's just like not quite the foresight that you would want. That's just like one small thing to improve upon. Otherwise, yes. it's like pretty good. It's like very good actually. I wouldn't be doing that much different than you. All right, so the tower's already dead. Hmm. I think you're doing fine. It's kind of awkward that your prophet's like farming towards you. You're walking towards a fight. I don't like this at all. You, I get it because you're here, but just like if you look at your items, like in your HP, like you just fucking die to anything. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Like Luna's so squishy that like, like if your team's kind of owning and you have people that are gonna stand in front of you, like you can sort of show up to fights because you have this lunar blessing, but like because you have this Yasha and not a um, Dragon Lance, it's just really awkward to show up to fights like this. Yeah. Um, like if they had just tried to kill you here. Yeah, I kind of felt awkward yeah, about it. I, I didn't feel right here. Yeah. So what you should do is like, you kind of farm towards your team. Which is fine, right? And you can you can determine if you want to take part in this engagement because you're over here and you've just farmed your way here. So this is like good. It's okay that you're here right now, but what you have to realize is like what you can do is you can like farm in the area because basically the, what you you would need information that this is like not going to be five on five, right? I mean, this invoker's dev doesn't really matter. Like if you saw yes. like drow show bottom or something then maybe you feel like comfortable to come show up here yeah uh, maybe i mean if gtp's in you're still kind of fucked maybe but um but like if you know you don't want to show up then i would just continue farming in the area and if you saw like drow here like there was like four heroes here like i would like just immediately just tb to the opposite side of the map is what i would be right. thinking to do right just based on the knowledge that you really do not want to take like a heads up fight against against these guys uh five right. on five like this um okay so you do that's basically what you should be looking to do um except yeah. without walking up into that shop area like you did <laughs> yeah uh, but otherwise that was pretty good you made the right decision i think yeah all right so we're farming this off the bottom clear the lane it's good you must have your manta Profits kind of going through your farm now. But you have your Manta, which is nice. Going straight BKB, yeah. So you're not going to have Dragon Lance basically ever because of this decision to go Manta straight after Morbid or uh, Mask of Madness. And like in this situation, maybe you could have gone the Dragon Lance instead of the Mask of Madness, although the sustain isn't as good. But it. The Mask of Madness is like, you can't really ever press it in a fight, right? Because yeah. the armor reduction is good. Yeah, be... I have a bad habit to actually always press the Mask of Madness in a fight. Yeah, like, that's kind of bad that I do that. Yeah, so um, it's not like bad overall. Like maybe you'll eventually want a butterfly. But having, this dra having a Dragon Lance would make it easier to um, like show up to engagements. Is if that's something you'd want to do. Yeah, yeah, I do want to do that. I think that uh, I do go a late D-Lance because I feel okay. like I need the range, but... Yeah. Which is okay. Which is good. Like, you, you want it no matter what. So if you end up getting a late here, that's better than just straight up not getting it for sure. Yeah. It's good lane pressure with the illusions. It's really playing around your team. Farming your BKB. Profits making space. 
Yeah. <laughs> I'm being nice. Yeah. <laughs> what can you do? <laughs> okay, so you guys decide you want to fight this. I don't like this TP. And, like, I can tell, like, your whole team was TPing for it. And, obviously, somebody made the call to, like, go to this. But, like, you don't have your BKB. And this tower does not matter. Like, at all. Do, do it doesn't you... matter? No. Not at all. Um, Like, at this late in the game. You effectively don't want to be farming here anyways, right? Like, it, like, earlier in the game, this tower sort of, like, makes it easier to keep control of your jungle, right? But right. this late in the game, you don't really feel safe just farming over here with no vision anyways, even with this tower being up. So it's not effectively giving you any control on the map that you would otherwise have. Yeah. And it's just taking you, like, off map and from playing, like, their side where your wards are. And... You just don't you don't have your item or anything so like it's not convenient to defend this tower like if you guys were like oh yeah like we'll just we can fight them anywhere anytime and so we're gonna just defend this tower just because we know we'll win 100 percent. that's like a yeah. little different because it's not like about defending the tower it's just about fighting them and killing them but yes. you're definitely not for sure gonna win some fight up here right right um so so given all that that is why you would not want to defend this tower and i you know i would say this to anybody on your team right now like if i was regardless of what hero like i was coaching right now i would say the same thing this tower doesn't matter you don't need to be up here it's better yeah. to just continue farming and if you want to fight them right like you have really good information right now i guess actually you have good information that they're not all there which actually changes it i was not paying attention to the map when i was saying all this but Given that you have the information they're not there, it's actually not that bad to TP. Well, let's see how this goes. Fortunately, you guys yeah, didn't kind touch of anybody. Your lord just died. Yeah. I kind of see what you were going for, actually. Like, they did not have their whole team there. Yeah, your guys' lineup is kind of bad. Um, just overall. It's like kind of hard to take these fights unless your lion's, like, catching somebody and you all get to like hit them yeah that's pretty much what's, what happens in this game um we kind of can't catch anybody can't cast a draw and that's what happens yeah it's pretty rough okay well you haven't died you're continuing to farm so that's good Let's keep going oh you tp top yeah i think i make a mistake here oh yeah this is not a good tp my friend So they really want this tower, obviously. They are a little separated again. I think I see the draw isn't there, but then the draw TP's in and I just make a mistake. Yeah, the draw TP'd in. I mean, this looked okay? Your entire team turned around, unfortunately. I see what you were going for, but uh... Yeah. Yeah, that's just a really awkward fight to take. Um, and I would rather, again, I would just rather not really show up to this because, like, you don't have your BKB. Like, if you have your BKB, maybe that goes better. Right, right. Uh, but, like, this close to an item, um, I've described this before in a video. Uh, obviously, I don't expect you to watch them all, but, like, my propensity to, like, want to fight them or, like, my willingness to fight them goes way down the closer i get to like an important like or is carry it's pretty much any item and whatever your next item is if you're really close to that you should like basically just straight up refuse to ever take any fight and right. immediately after you get the item your willingness to fight should be like really high like if you had just finished your bkb i would kind of like you i would like this tp um, yeah, and because I, you I don't think I die there if it. I have. Yeah, I, I won't even die if I have BKB. So yeah, I kind of make a mistake. Yeah, yeah, because you don't take any of the damage from that invoker there. So yeah, I think I agree. So yeah, that's the thing, right? Is like you just almost had an item and you didn't, and you fought not on a timing for you. Was this timing for Drow? Doesn't look like it. She didn't have any particular strong item, but yeah, you just fought right before one of your own timings, and that's something that you know, if you can. Um, you know, only fight on your timings, 
you yeah. will be like the fights will just go better so much more often and it's really important to like determine like am i close to a timing and like have this sense of like wanting to go fight them when you're close or when you've hit a timing and really not wanting to fight them when you've not hit a timing or like when you're when yeah. you're like close but not there yet Yeah, that's that's a that would be a really big thing I would say you should focus on. Um, you know, I don't know if it always goes exactly. I'm sure it doesn't go exactly like that all the time, but just showing up, like you know, TPing to a fight, 100 gold from BKB just tells me that you're kind of willing to do that sometimes at least, and you should kind Definitely. of never be yeah. willing to do that. Yeah, I do that a lot actually. Yeah, okay. that's a big mistake. Yeah, definitely look to work on that. So you have your BKB now. So like, if you were to fight them right now, I kind of like like how this is going. You're like positioned aggressively in their jungle. Somebody should take that outpost. Doesn't necessarily shouldn't really be you, but like it can be. Kind of like poking. I would have sent my mantle illusions at bottom, like when I was down here, like right. Yeah. Because they're about to spawn right. I would just spawn my mantle illusions and send them up this hill, because it's gonna yeah. destroy this wave. It'll do damage to the tower. It's actually, it's actually, it doesn't seem like that big a deal, but if you can kill this wave while it's on this hill, it like, it prevents this lane from needing to like be dealt with again for like so much longer. Um, yeah. You just get to see the creep equilibrium like super shoved in your favor, which is just, you cannot underestimate the importance of that or overstate the importance of that either one right. really. So now you send your mental illusions down, it looks like. Yeah, yeah, you do. It's a little slow. Okay. This is rough. Got to hit that wraith pact. I guess I don't know if you saw the patch, but it wouldn't really—it won't really matter now. But in that game, you needed to hit that wraith pact. Uh, let's take a look yeah. at this fight, though, from like a more general perspective. So you guys are kind of grouped up. You have okay vision with this ward, but the tide is just sitting in front. You see the OD, you see the Lich Bottom. Oh, your Prophet's dead. Wow, what is this item build? Holy moly. Yeah, this fight is trash without Prophet being alive. I was like, where are your heroes? I was like, where are your other heroes? But yeah, like, um, I just would not take this at all. Like, when Prophet's dead, you basically have to pretend that you're like, you, you just never fight them. If you have an important hero dead in a close game like this, it's you just have to play like you guys are really weak like you're not in theory like if you're all alive you're not and you can take this fight and you're positioned aggressively but when you've got a really important hero with a ton of your team's net worth uh, like this prophet um you just have to pretend like they're way 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 stronger than you it's not really pretending they are they're way 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 stronger than you with this prophet being dead and you just have to yes. act like it instead of like running and looking for this fight because right. um, even if you play this fight perfectly, I mean, if you BKB the Ravage, insta kill his Wraith Pact, and press R, like I still think you guys lose this fight, legit. Yeah. Um, just because his Prophet's dead. Um, yep. Like you guys just aren't gonna out damage and, like you said, catch this Drowge is never gonna happen. So, so yeah, just the mis the, mis the mistake there was fighting without a hero alive on your team. So. What should yeah. we have done instead of this fight? Because when did Prophet die, right? Prophet died a while back. He died top. And then we continue to farm this area. But, like, basically, the read here is, like, I'm going to continue to farm this area, and if the enemy tries to walk in, I'm, like, walking away from them. Like, there's no way I'm fighting them here. So, like, so I sometimes I get backwards. I feel like I feel pressured by my team. Like, like you know, is it better to just let the three of them die rather than take the chance of a 4v5 and we might win it? A hundred percent. Um, and like, you should try to make them not die. Like, a prophet's dead. Um, you should be like, oh, I'm not gonna fight. And you should just tell your team like, hey, like, prophet's dead. Like, I'm not gonna fight. You know? And hopefully yeah. they take that as a sign that like they really shouldn't fight. And if they still do, like, it's like, you just gotta ignore it. It is. It is yeah. way better. To let all three of them die while you're continuously farming, yeah. then have the chance of like winning the four v five and like a one in ten scenario. Right. You'll just, the expected value of you continuing your farm and your three teammates feeding is like not a big deal. Right. And actually, this is important because I think 
a lot of people don't understand this, especially kind of at the mid-range MMRs. It's actually, like I say, it's not a big deal. Like, it actually doesn't matter at all. If your three teammates feed, but you guys, like, had, like, you guys had good map control before that, and you're continuing to free farm and, like, sending Manta Illusions down side lanes, like, it actually doesn't matter. Like, the three kills that they get, it doesn't matter. Um, well, yeah, I mean, I, yeah. I think most people strong, think it, like, yeah. matters, like, kind of a lot, but if you're free farming as the carry... And, like, it's not your whole team dying for free. Like, if it's just three people, especially if it's, like, your three lowest net worth heroes, like, it actually doesn't matter, and it's fine. Like, right. you know, and if they get a huge, they might, the worst thing that happens is, like, maybe they get a huge objective. But, like, that's what I mean, right? If you had farmed backwards and continued to, and, like, sent another Manta Illusion bottom, yeah. and then, like, come and farmed up here, and they killed your three teammates here... Like what are they gonna do? They're gonna they just have to like clean up bottom wave and like maybe you even rotate around and can like push in mid and like they can't like do anything, right? They just yeah. have to fix their waves. Um so yes. like effectively they like, haven't progressed the game at all, and that's what matters, is like if they win the fight, are they gonna progress the game at all? And if the answer is no, which a lot of times in like this MR will be, um yeah. then it's fine. Um hold on. Okay, I was talking while stuff was happening. So your team respawned. Well, you respawned, right? Because you had died. Let me go way back, sorry. Just talking, I like lost track of like watching what you were doing. So you respawn, you TP bottom. I kind of like this TP, just gotta get the lane out. You have to be careful about it. Yeah, I think that was good. Just send the illusions down. I would want to send my illusions down there again. So what? what is the only thing that matters in this phase of the game right now? Like, to progress the game for either team. The towers, the waves? No, a diff it's an, a different objective. Roshan? Yeah, Roshan. Okay. In terms of progressing the game, like, whoever gets Roshan then has the capability to, like, progress the game further. And, like, we'll probably get a huge leap. Would you agree? Yes, I, I agree. So, the net... All of your actions should be thinking, like, well... We don't want them to take Roshan. We want to take Roshan. It's like, what can we do to make that happen? So keeping this lane shoved in really far. And even if you have the ability, I don't think you guys do right this second, but to like recontrol this area and grab this outpost would kind of give you then the ability to like swing over and take Roshan while they have to like deal with this. Um, yes. Sometimes it's too dangerous to be able to do that. But that's my thought between behind like liking your TP bottom. That's why I like what you did here. And you right. sent the illusions down, and I would just want to send them again, because I want to like push this in far, and like they're down here showing, which is fine. They're not going to stay down here forever. I want to push this in far, so that we can then set up for Roshan like safely, or like get a good smoke and fight them, and then do Roshan right. Um, right. Because we because we don't. Uh, when did we first have Manta up? I know it was on cooldown, obviously. Where are you? Okay, we're at the shop. So, like, if you just summon them right here and, like, walk them bottom. Um, does Necro already TP? Oh, no, the Necro hadn't tp So, if you'd send your mantle down here, maybe the Necro doesn't TP down here. It's not, like, really yeah. bad that he does, but... Well, actually, it is, because what happens is your team gets into a fight down here, which is really dumb. I guess they did stay down there forever. It's not your fault, but I would have wanted to be sending my Mantle Illusions down there anyways. I like what you're doing now, though. Split pushing on the opposite side of the map from where you see them. This is good. Depending on where they show next, like, you guys could even take Roshan right now. You plus Profit take Roshan really fast. Okay, so you're just farming, sending Illusions mid. You're controlling the waves really well. But yeah, they take Roshan. Did somebody else die in this fight that happens here? Yeah, I'm just wondering if anything could have happened here. No, because you have two heroes dead. Yeah, my only idea would be to take Roshan, like, right now. Like, if you just tell your Prophet to, like, hey, come hit this Roshan, right? Like, this guy does a ton of damage. It's, like, all he does is damage. So you guys could just Rosh right now, because you know they're not here. They were just showing bottom, and they have creeps hitting both their towers... So all the only play they have is either come clean up their waves or like 
split push you and you know if they split push you you can just like get the roshan and then like go deal with it so yeah. taking the roshan right now would have been pretty hype um, but unfortunately we do not do that and they all tp'd and so now you're cleaning up their waves and they clean up their waves and then are perfectly positioned to roshan so your only alternative play would be to like smoke like right now as a team how strong are we we finished our Dragonlance a little while ago. When did we finish this item? Because, like, when to fight, like... Oh, I see. You're, you're building a pike. Oh, it's sitting out on the courier? Okay, so you've got teammates dead. Split pushing. Farming. So you have the pike. Oh, I see. You have the pike. So yeah, I mean, this is like kind of a power spike for you. I mean, Hurricane Pike might not matter that much. Um, I, I'm not sure how it'll play out, but I think taking a fight right here with your whole team being alive, and your mana is like kind of low on resources. It doesn't matter too much as long as you can arrow. Yeah. You might look to like take a fight right here and like call for your team to like defend the Roche Pit if you think you can. Right. Because that's the objective that matters when you should be thinking about. So it's basically, are we giving up Roshan or are we like gonna contest Roshan? Um, so here you completely give it up. It just should have been something to think about. And maybe you did, I don't know. Yeah, I just didn't think about it. I was just thinking in terms of, like, I cannot... I, like, I'm playing solo. I cannot, like, get my team to do anything. Right, so right. I'm just playing solo. Okay, so this seems reasonable to me. Because the tide is not here. Stupid replay bugs. Okay, so you TP back. Insta pop Manta, pop BKB, run in. Oh, you used your Mask of Madness. Okay, you got a kill. It did cost your BKB. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Yeah. I mean, honestly, even if he hadn't sprouted himself. Yeah, the Ravage would have still I don't gone. think that was going to work, given that the Tide was here. What is your Lion doing? Did he just TP to this outpost? Oh, he did. He respawned. He TP to this outpost. That's funny. Also sad. Oh, then you force that forward. I the Ravage off. Yeah, that's unfortunate. Um, I think overall that went pretty well. I think you just um, it, it would have just required a little more patience from you in the team fight, which is tough. Sorry, I heard something. Do you need to like take call or something? Are you good? No, 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 it's all right. Okay. Yeah, I think the only thing you could have done differently here is just shown a little bit more patience before going in here. Obviously, your prophet kind of just like fucked it up. Like he just like blinked forward and died. Because um, the only thing you would that would be able to continue taking this fight is basically if your line connects so yeah. i don't really blame you for this it's not really your fault okay let's see if the game goes on a little bit longer so watch a little bit more yeah then we'll go to the next one Game's just devolving into like kind of team sort of chain feeding. The important thing to try and do here is pretty like get out of the map and like use your mantle illusions to control waves, which is exactly what you're doing. So this is good. Maybe could have considered shard here, um, just to like not have to hard commit to like do your damage. You know what I mean? But yeah. It's kind of tough either way. You think a blink might have worked here against Drow? Mm. I kind of see what you're going for. Maybe, but it's like, are you going to kill this Drow before she like gets away from you? You know? No, she's not going to die. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe if the really Necro sure. also jumps her. Yeah. Like you would need a coordinated jump, which just in a pub is like pretty unreliable. Yeah. Yeah. In a game like this, with, like, these lineups, um, like, basically the only way you can... You're, like, you're not going to win this, like, 
in a normal way right like you just have to like be better than like everybody else in the lobby right you have to like make the right farming decisions you have to not go to bad fights and then you just have to show up with like 10k more yeah. net worth than they do and they just win because you're rich you know yes taking a normal yes. with the lineups like this you're just not going to win if you're like the same skill level or playing the same skill levels like everybody in your lobby which yeah. you know is hard like most people are at the mmr they're supposed to be at unless they're like yeah taking steps to improve but um, that's just how i see it um this tp well you're here to take the fight which makes sense um wow, it's just like really awkward basically i would not want to make this tp like i'd want to tp only after they've like committed into my base okay because right now you're a, you're a you're farming maybe you'll get another item b you can like apply split pressure which like will make them possibly mess up maybe it'll make them send somebody back to deal with it in which case then you could tp right but if you yeah. just like tp without forcing a reaction from them and before they've really committed you just locked yourself in your base, right? Because, like, you yes. make this TP, and, like, a fight happens. But, like, A, it's just a 5v5, which, like, probably won't go well. They have an Aegis, right? Um, yes. Your Marana's not even here. Uh, so you really should be the last one here. So, like, your Marana's not here. You should definitely shouldn't be here. Um, right. But B, like, even if they didn't force the fight here, like, they could just, like, walk away, and you just be completely stuck in your base. You know what I mean? Yes. Like, you would not be able to leave if they if they played well, right? If they just, like, backed up and then, like, cut this wave and we're cutting this wave and, like, if they have a ward down over here, like, your team could just, like, never leave your base again. So that's why this TP yeah, is, like, think, not that great. Yeah, I think that the... I, I saw BSA call this the BSA TP. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he TPs to the base like this and gets stuck in the base. I've done the same thing. I actually had BSJ review a replay of mine. It was a Faceless Void replay. I saw that, yeah. Oh, you saw it. Yeah, I did exactly this TP. And that's why I'm telling you to not do it for the exact reasons he told me not to do it. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah we pop all of our items. Really got to kill that Wraith Pact. Which is funny because, like, I can tell you to do that, but it, wasn't, it won't really matter anymore because the item just got giga nerfed and probably won't be bought much anymore at all. Except for against super high fizz lineups. But if you killed that Wraith Pact like first, maybe you would have killed the Titan OD. I still don't think it would have mattered. Yeah. In terms of winning the fight. But um, well, it was, it was kind of close. I mean, if somebody else were to kill it, that would have been better. But if you're the only one, you're the only one. So the game like doesn't end here? Or does it just end in a long yeah. drawn out way? It, it just back off. But I mean, it's just over anyway. Okay. It's not going to. Yeah. Yeah, so keys, key concepts here in this game were the skill builds for the lane. I think you played the lane pretty well. Um, your skill build, just you want to be able to transition to the jungle sooner. And for yeah. Luna, that means Moonglaive. And like do it efficiently sooner, right? So the more points in Moonglaives. Generally yeah. for Luna, you want to... Um, however many points in Beam you get, usually one, sometimes zero, sometimes two. You generally want to have one more point in Lunar Blessing than Moonglaives. So, like, first you're, like, one point of Moonglaives, two point of Lunar Blessing. Then I would go second point of Moonglaives, and then third point of Lunar Blessing. And then I would go third point of Moonglaves, and then fourth point of Lunar Blessing. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, I get it. Okay. And then, other than that, your early farming rotations were pretty good. Showing up to defend this Tier 1 tower, like I said, it didn't really matter. Um, you did yeah. have the read that they, like, didn't have all the heroes there. Um, but even then, like, it's okay to just give it up and continue farming efficiently and, like, keep control of the other areas of the map. Yeah. Yeah, I guess if we had not taken those bad fights and uh, fought on my timings, maybe we could have won this game. Exactly, and then fighting on your timings, the BKB. Because that's what it takes, that's just what it takes, like, in hard games like this, where, like, the lineup kind of puts you at a bit of a disadvantage. Um, that's yeah. what it takes, is really cutting back those decisions, uh, those bad decisions and bad fights. Because taking those bad fights like one or two times just makes the hole you have to climb out of really hard yeah um especially as a carry player yeah yeah items i think were okay um maybe could have gone dragon lance i didn't i didn't hate it i didn't like the mask of madness into manta this game specifically just because you kind of needed the dragon lance to deal with the drow and also like pressing the mask of madness in fights 
maybe it's maybe it's not that bad against this line. I was thinking it's bad against Rao, but maybe it's not because she kind of ignores your armor anyways. I don't know. I don't know. Right. Um. Otherwise, I think you're going the right direction. Um, I think the Silver Edge would have been a cool item too. I think that would have worked out. Uh, I think that was a good item to go for, I mean. Yeah. Uh, but then, yeah, the BKB, the not fighting on the BKB timing is pretty big. And yeah, like the other thing you could have considered this game, and I'm not saying it would have been 100% correct, but would have been to like go the Lucent Beam Talents and get your Shard and then just like kind of sit back and like beam this tide or this od as they walk up you know what i mean yes um especially with like the like the crit kind of aspect but yeah. so that wouldn't 100 percent have like worked i don't play a ton of luna so yeah all right let's look at this am game do you have any other questions about that game no that's pretty clear okay well that last tp wasn't that great but at that point the game was pretty hard so yeah Right. So you're A on this game. Yeah, so I, I kind of, uh, in this game, I tried a different way to lane. Like, I tried to be aggressive, which I generally don't do in lanes. Mm -hmm. And I kind of just paid for it because um, I just don't do that, and I'm not good at that. I'm just good at hitting creeps, I feel like, so... I missed my timings a little bit, and we came back into the game somehow, mm -hmm. and then we lost, even though we had mega creeps. Okay. So yeah, I think the same decision making, I uh, kind of got me in the, you know, in a in a in a bit of a problem here as well. Gotcha. Do you pick AM a lot? I sure. Yeah. Yeah, I have a sixty percent win rate on him. Okay. I was just gonna say it's kind of rough to pick him second phase like you did because you're gonna get countered um, by tryhards, yeah. which you know good players will do. But there's Ricky like counter pick too, you know, and then obviously yeah. had a good game, makes life uh, makes life difficult. But uh, you know, gotta yeah. pick your heroes. It's all good. Yeah. I'm sure, like you said, this game was winnable. So we'll take a look at what could have been done differently. Playing, I, I did want to say, playing aggressively in lane as AM is kind of something you should do. Yeah. Assuming that you're not just, like, completely hard counter and the lane's not just total shit. But, like, this hero is one of the best early game... Like, AM's level 2 power spike is stronger than, like, almost any other hero in the game. Right. So, I don't fault you for playing aggressive. And you say, like, oh, I shouldn't. I should just, like should just hit creeps which is like you should not hit creeps right but you should be able to like kind of balance it and we'll see what you do here uh, it's hard so I, I want you to be able to think like oh i know when to be aggressive and when not to be so we'll like try and focus on that here so we can like kind of right. help you out a little bit right why don't you hit this guy this guy's here alone i would just level up mana break and hit this guy i would chase this guy and hit this guy like five times like he can't get away from you yeah yeah you know what i mean like this yeah. you literally could do like free like 300 400 damage to this guy or like yeah, you I'm know just, and yeah. you're gonna like force him to cookie away from you yeah, i'm generally in these situations i'm kind of always scared that there's gonna be one more there and, and you know oh, yeah. even though yeah i just mean that situation like you, you knew there was nobody yeah. else like right there the guy's a psycho yeah so a little bit of yeah. a missed opportunity this is good. This is good. See, I like this. This is this is shit that good good players do. You missed one creep, but you did like a bajillion damage to Pudge. Unfortunately, your end just like a psycho, and like just stood over there for no reason and no HP. Okay, so lane shoving, which kind of helps out the whole aggressive thing. So you're level two. Blink on this guy. Blink on this guy. Blink on this guy. <laughs> this is huge. This is so important. So when you're playing heroes like this, it's so important that you're as aggressive as possible when you have these openings. So what you need to be looking for is like, A, are they alone? B, do I have like the creep advantage? Do I need to be hitting a creep right now? It's so like what happens here is you do not need to be hitting creeps. You get the, well, you try and get the last hit, whatever. Yeah. You go for the last hit, 
You have no creeps you need to hit. This guy has no creeps to defend him, and he is alone. We do not see where this pudge is, and you were about to have five creeps. So even if the pudge walked up, if they tried to fight you instead of run away, you plus Ench plus five creeps is going to destroy them. So these are the yeah. opportunities you need to see, and this is when you know you need to be aggressive. So this is like a huge mistake to not blink on this guy here, like right now. Yeah. Like this guy should honestly die. Not die. I think he has to cookie away though. Like you basically should burn all of his mana and he has to cookie away. And he should be like yeah. a third HP. And it's when you don't take advantage of these opportunities when you're strong, the lane gets harder later when you're not strong. Like if you yeah. don't abuse your own power spikes and you just chill, the enemy is super happy and then they're going to hit their power spike later and you're going to be super sad, right? Yes. So yeah, big mistake there. Huge, especially as AM. Like that is just textbook. AM blinks on you and fucking ruins your day. Um, yeah. So you gotta, you gotta be ready for those opportunities as AM, and you, you gotta be looking for them. You gotta be looking for them. It's not enough to just like notice them. Like you have to be right. looking. Like when can I blink on this guy? Right? Yeah. Um. And the answer is like when they're separated. And when there's no creeps nearby, like, you have the creep advantage. That's, like, what you should be looking for. Yes. Sorry. It's, like, just, there was, like, a replay. I wanted to watch what happened, and there's a replay bug. So you're hitting this guy, which is good. They go on your inch, which is, like, life. I like you hitting this guy. Okay, you blinked away. Eat a tango. It's fine. Creep back row? It's not bad. You could have creep back row a little bit earlier, like, right away. Yeah. Because um, well, you can't see it. But if you creep aggro now, and then you like you have to like hit the creep once, but then if you creep aggro again, and you can get it to come back, you can right. like get the lane kind of way back here, and then you don't kill it, right? You like you wait till your creeps get there, and then your creeps kill it. It slows them down. These replay bugs are so annoying. I can't believe they still haven't fixed this yet. Yeah. Um, not a huge deal. Creep aggro again. So right now you kind of want to be playing chill, which you are. Right, your inch is in here. <laughs> what you're doing is fine. I would need another tango. Yeah, unfortunately, this project guys kind of walk at you. Boink. Yeah, and so this is like this. Just to point it out, I don't think you did anything like wrong right here, but like where these creeps get separated and then they're hitting you. Right, this is where you like. This is where you don't really want to be aggressive because you've got like three creeps trying to hit you, right? Yeah. Um, it's like, well, maybe you could go on the snap right now, but like with all these creeps going on here, you don't really want to do that. Yeah. I was trying to get the ranged. Yeah. No, that was good. And what you did was fine. Um, and that's one of the advantage or one of the things you can do as AM is like aggressive, especially early on in the lane like this, is you can try and kill these creeps faster like it's okay if you keep the lane pushed in a little bit because it's going to open up opportunities for aggression for you versus yeah. if the lane's always shoving into you you're never going to have opportunities to be aggressive on them yeah and it's like okay to like not screw up the equilibrium but um you know basically screw up the equilibrium yes it's here Grab your inch Okay, you got the kill. It's hard to tell with that like, camera movement. Okay, nice. Very nice. Okay. Honestly, yeah. not bad. It's just not anticipating the pudge, the pudge return. And also, there's like a bunch of creeps here. So, like, if you wanted to do this play, um, yeah, this is just not a good time because there's creeps dying under your tower. There's this creep that's dying. Um, so yeah. Choosing to do it when there's no creeps immediately dying is like ideal. Yes. Otherwise, it like kind of went okay. Um, until this guy hooked you. It's, it's unfortunate. Did you get your ring of health right? Yeah. We're getting it. Okay. Oh, awkward 
link forward. That's okay. The guy was alone, so that it kind of worked out. I kind of liked what you were going for there. Um, like the pudge was kind of isolated, which is like a good time yeah. to blink on them. And you weren't doing anything else anyways. Oh, the dukes. That's unfortunate. Good try. I think maybe you want to not blink here, though. Like, it, when you see this, I think you just have to, like, walk. Right. Or no, you did. Oh, never mind. You did. You did walk, and then you just, like, juked you. Never mind, never mind. I was thinking... I don't know what yeah. I was thinking. I saw something that didn't happen. Um... I would maybe have gotten the boots first, just because of kind of like what just happened, right? You just want to be able to like run them down. Yes. Uh, like the boots are an aggressive item, if you know what I mean, versus like, yeah. in theory, the gloves of pace is like an aggressive item, but um, if they're going to get away from you, like doesn't matter anyways. Not a bad yeah. item on AMM, obviously, but... It's good. Good aggression. Oh, got a lush here. Alright. Overall, this isn't going bad, honestly. We just missed the opportunity early and then just had that kind of untimely pudge return to lane situation. But other than that, I think it's like kind of going okay. I probably would have walked at that guy there. Like, he's like kind of alone and out of position. Like, when he does this to you? Yeah. Like, he should not be able to do this. This is another, like... Like, he shouldn't want to get hit by you, right? Yeah. So, like, here what I do... Is, like, I would be walking towards him. Towards this range creep. You're, like, walking right. away from him towards this range creep? Like, I'd be walking towards him. Like, I'd be happy to hit this guy right now. You're full right. HP. And you just kind of, like, dodge him. So, yeah, this is, like, another situation... Where, like, you just needed to walk at this guy. Like, he was way out of position. So you're just, like, not punishing when they're, they're like, way out of position. Yeah. You, like, kind of went for it the one time against the Pudge. Um, you did that one time against Snap before Pudge came back. But, like, here, too. Um, you should play a little bit more aggressively. Like, the Pudge is, like, back here. You kind of see him. Yeah. Like, you should walk at this guy. Cancel his clarity. Hit him twice. Right? Yeah. Um, and then you can blink out is the thing. Like, if you don't have to blink in, then you can blink out. And yes. you can trade some of your, like, Ring of Health region that you'll have for, like, this mana and, like, yeah. extra free damage. Um, yeah, you can blocks up and you can't. There wasn't a creep dying either, you know what I mean? Yeah. Okay, yeah, and then this blink is, like, eh, I mean, it's okay. Like, Lush was coming, but you don't really want to, like, blink in like that unless you, like, have to... To slow him down. Because, like, Lesh was, like, here. Right. I would have just continued walking and saved my blink. Just because, like, that can, like, turn yeah. on you pretty fast. Like, if they, like, right. counter-rotate, then you don't have blink. And you're, like, fucked. But yeah, not a huge deal. Somehow did not work out. But that's life. All right. We're trying to jungle. It's not going well. I don't have our full treads yet. A little under-leveled. Our treads coming now. Yeah. But, see, now our life's hard. Yeah. Um, and like this is just what happens when you're AM and you don't like kind of crush your lane early because you like yeah. miss a couple opportunities is like then the lane just becomes like really hard. It's like you can't really do anything. It's not really your fault. Like it's just this hero just doesn't do anything in this phase. All right, cleaning up the camp. It's okay. Good creep aggro. Oh. oh no. Ah. This guy have mana? Yeah, I still had a bunch of mana, unfortunately. I would have kept walking at him. Um, unless you're like a hundred percent sure that they're like out of mana. It's better to just like keep walking them down. Yeah. But you know. Sort of a reasonable attempt. But also the um wait, where did you blink? Was it after you Oh, it was after you mana void and then you blink to chase. And yeah, that's a thing, right? Is like you mana voiding and not getting the kill forced you to like blink to continue chasing him versus if you just walk him down, then you save your blink to like get away. Yeah. All right. Life is hard. 
Yeah, I can see what you mean. You like you said like when we started is like you try to be aggressive in the lane and kind of backfired. So yeah. it's just like um, it's just the the execution's a little off. But yeah. I like conceptually that you're at least trying to play aggressive on AM because that's like important. Like you're not gonna be like a five K AM player if you like play like a pussy in lane all the time, you know what I mean? I try. You like have to be able to be aggressive and you're you know, you're trying out. You're learning your limits. Yeah. Alright, so we're jungling, we've got uh, another component coming out. Um so do you ever think about like if you can walk up and like like, it's you and this carry, right? Like, do you know what would happen if you walked up to Ricky right now? You thought about it? Yeah, I, I feel uncomfortable walking up to him because I, I feel like I'll get smoked or, you know, like it's not going to work out for me. Okay. Yeah, that's good to think about because if this carry was, like, um, a level 7, like, Wraith King, right? And yeah. he was here, it would be really good to just, like, walk at him and, like, right. dare him to stand there while you, like, hit him, right? Right, right. Um, so it's just important to think about that. Obviously, in this scenario, I agree with you. I don't think if you walked up to him, it would go very well at all. You could probably solo right. kill you if you fuck up. Uh, but yeah, good but to think about. I, I, think, think about. I think you raised a good point here because I feel like I I kind of just try to avoid like things like that. Like Even if there was a Wraith King, I probably would not have like fought him. I would have thought, oh, he has a reincarnation or, or you know, he has crit. Uh, it's not good for me or... Like I would not have gone for him either way. I would have found reasons to not go for him. So yeah, that's what that's what I was thinking. It's like you probably weren't thinking about it at all. Um, yeah. Here we go. Yeah, that's pretty much how that goes. So, um, that's funny because I asked you how it would go, and then you walk into him, and then we we find out uh, he went on yeah. you under your tower. So I'm not like totally blaming you for this, but like at this point, like right now, you should be like, I need to leave. Yeah. Like, you really need to leave, like, right now. I don't know if you die here. You walk away. No, you're sitting here. Like, you can't even do this. Like, this guy will just dive you under the tower and kill you. Uh, what's gonna happen? Oh, man. If I was that guy, I probably would've gone on you. <laughs> Snap is now here. Okay, so now you do leave. Yeah, this is and this is just late, right? Like, you yeah. got, like, two creeps, I think, for staying. Yeah. Um, I maybe got a little bit more, but like it's just dangerous, right? Like as soon as this happens, because this is a long time, right? It's yeah. a very long time. Because if you leave, walks away. If you leave like now, it's twelve twenty six. Yeah. When do you actually leave? So you get these two creeps. You don't get those creeps. So that was literally 50 seconds. 45. It was 45 seconds before you left when we knew we needed to, like, not be here anymore. And you got two creeps for it, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. So it's just, like, pointing out, like, things like this is, like... Like, it's really important to leave as soon as possible. So you left late, and I just wanted to, like, kind of point that out to you. Uh, obviously, like, feels kind of bad to, like, get forced out of your lane. But if you can just, like, yeah. heads up do it ASAP, then, you know, your life will be a lot better. And you'll be 45 seconds ahead of in farm where you otherwise would have been. Yeah. Being aggressive in the side lane, I like. Chilling for some lane creeps. Not so bad. Nice reflect. Alright, you're not going back to the lane. That's fine. Saw a couple heroes up there. Let's get all in the mag mid. Going back to lane. It's fine. It's all good. I like you're keeping an eye on this. Yeah, I mess up here. Oh no. Wow. This guy is crazy high leveled. That's impressive, actually. That's unfortunate, he just had the urn. Wow. And yeah. He's got the phase. Uh, right, he's got like the perfect items to like kill you in that situation. That's unfortunate. Well, you tried. The guy was very high level. In a normal, 
in a game where he wasn't quite as high level, there you had a little more levels, right? Yeah. Uh, that possibly goes differently. Yeah. You know, if you have one more level and you add like more points in mana break, like you maybe just kill him there. Yeah, I didn't think I was gonna die, but I got surprised by the spirit vessel, which you know I should not have been, but I was. So. Yeah, that's no, all good. It's all good. It happens. Learning our limits. Like I don't think that's a terrible death, right? You're like, oh, I thought I was gonna win that, and then you didn't. Like, okay, well you just learn, right? Yeah. I did. I didn't know you were gonna lose that, and then he was level ten. It's like, wait, what are you gonna do? So Ricky's here, top now, so we're farming. Oh, don't want to get hooked. So my thought here, like, even when you walked towards this camp, instead of walking yeah. to the right, is, like, I don't want to be in the same part of the map as this Ricky. Right. I just don't. Um, so as soon as this Ricky shows, like, if you're farming this camp, like, I want you to farm away from where the Ricky is. Like, farm right. this camp, and then, like, go back to your triangle or farm yeah. this camp and like blink away or something. Um, but just like the whole thought process should be is, is Ricky up here? Me leave. Right. Yeah. This guy just solo kills you like at every phase of the game. Um, right. So like it, he doesn't kill you here, which is fine. But like even just walking towards that camp instead of the other one, it's like that kind of choice. Like, right. What are you basing your decision? What are you basing your farming patterns on? Um, like in yeah. a situation where you're like hard countered by the other carry and he's like in your part of the map um that's like one thing i'm definitely want to base my decision on like here i don't really like this i mean this ricky like didn't have a lot of hp but like he can kill you f easily and like this is just a big waste of time right you got nothing out yeah. of this yeah um like when i see this ricky diving here or whatever like, right, if, if he's, like, really low, I'm like, oh, maybe I can show up and, like, kill him, right? That would be good. Yeah. This is not a situation where you're like, oh, I'm getting a kill here, right? Like, this is yes. full HP Ricky. My Ange is, like, basically dead. I, if I'm you, I'm just, like, farming mid, farming all the way to bottom right now. Yeah. Just be efficient. Being efficient with your time. Yeah, there's just, like, kind of, like, tunnel vision on tunnel vision on getting a kill which just like doesn't matter right like you're an am with only battle fury like what should you be doing right now yeah it's not gonna work yeah you just, you just need to be hitting creeps your yeah. your role in fights is like clean up not like chase down the full hp guy and try and get him right yeah yeah um, okay so now we're resetting and now our map kind of sucks because mag pushed in mid instead of us like getting to mid they're all top, which is fine. Yeah, you guys ended up getting that, like, one punch kill. It was kind of all precipitated by you. If you hadn't chased that guy down, that, like, literally would not have happened. Yeah. What can you do? Um, I think he's reasonable to have his dragon scale. It's okay. So farming this area. Keeping mid pushed in, presumably. Nice. Good. Bunch of shit happening. So yeah, I don't like this, that you're farming towards this Ricky. Um, like, I don't think you guys are killing him. I mean, now your Lush is dead, but like, I just want you to, I literally want you to like, see this Ricky's here on the map, and like, I literally just want you to farm the other way, right? Identify your bad matchups, if they if they have somebody that can solo kill you, and literally just farm away from them at all points. Like, right, this Ricky can just walk up here right now. There's nothing talking yeah. about just walking up here. Um, it's like, why, eh, he did why are we letting, you know, you didn't know that, or I guess you saw him on this entry, but, like, why are we letting this guy, like, be anywhere near you, right? You're an AM. You can be anywhere on the map. Yeah. Wow. I was just, like, owning you guys. Was an act of charity. This team is alright. I don't love it, but... <laughs> this line's telling you to go and you're like no bro <laughs> no i can't do that <laughs> good decision to not go there i like that yeah. uh, this is really awkward so here i think i would go bottom right because right. you and this lash both need to farm and you can like be bottom fast and like kind of clear it out and then like make a new decision based on what you see 
yeah. might possibly live versus this lesh cannot go bottom right now right and there's no yeah. chance here because you farm them so this is like an efficiency of being aware of what your teammates want like yeah because you go farm this ancient camp this lesh is like you guys are basically sharing camps this lesh is smart and he runs past you i don't know now he's running around basically this lesh is not getting any farm and you kind of like stole the farm he could get yeah what you could have done, because you're the more mobile hero, is you also could have skipped this. You could have walked top, but you could have like skipped this and left it for your lesh and gone up to farm yeah. up here, because you're the more mobile hero. And these decisions yeah. matter a lot. Um, they don't happen. Well, they happen a decent amount at low MMRs, because like you know, people make bad TPs mostly is what happens. Um, but yeah. you'll be in the same spot as one of your cores, especially as a position one or position two player. These are things you have to like think about. Where should if you're in the same spot as this guy it's like well we shouldn't both farm here so like where should one of us go so yeah. is the more mobile sometimes the more mobile hero will be the position two hero right if you're a if you're like a a drow and your mid is a void spirit right like he could have been the one that should have gone bottom not you yeah but in this situation yeah. right you're the mobile hero he's not so yeah um, something to think about for sure kind of an advanced decision too uh, you know because yes. a lot of times is people as carrier it's like oh my team's taking my farm but like sometimes you should be letting your team take certain farm right and you yeah. should be taking different farm because yeah we're all playing the same part of the map here and am you don't really want to be taking the safe farm so like what, what happened here you cleared this once i feel like we so made I, another bad decision i'm kind of scared of going into my jungle because you know i feel like i'll die there if i go there right well we see the ricky there so we don't want to go there so I would just walk top right now. Like, you don't want to fight this Pudge for sure. Um, yeah. This guy obviously has proven he's very annoying to you. But the Ricky's bottom. So, like, yeah. and they don't have a tower here, right? So I would just, like, farm this camp, farm this camp, maybe. As long as it yeah. doesn't seem like the Pudge is right there. Maybe if you see Pudge leave or something, you have access to this area. If not, the camps will respawn, and then you farm these again. And then maybe you push in the creep wave, and it's, like, over here. And in the meantime, you've, like, cleared this area up for your Lesh and the, your, the rest of your team. Yes. Because what you do do is like you again kind of like so like the lesh takes this farm which like makes sense he should right but you're on top of your lesh again and then the camps respawn and then you're like still just in the same area right? Yeah. So it would have been nice if you could have refarmed these camps and then just like wait for this pudge to like do whatever he's going to do and then clean up the wave because now this lesh again has nowhere to go. Like, he doesn't want to walk bottom either, right? Yep. So yeah, it's just, like, really awkward. Like, series of, like, farming patterns. It just made it, like, really awkward for your team. Like, your team's, like, GPM as a whole is, like, kind of tanked in the last, like, two minutes. Because the Lesh, like, is not hit. He's hit, like, he's got one creep wave in the last, like, two minutes, right? Yes. It's not really his fault. Okay, but now we're up here. HUD showed, the Lesh did go bottom, so we're taking this farm. Big fight happening. We're running top, this is good. I like the pressure. I think it's really important here to TP. I was gonna say, I think it's important here to be hitting the tower. Like if they're right. like actively taking a fight, let's slow it down a little bit. Right, I like this blinking forward aggressively, clearing the camps. Like, I really like this. And then here, so I guess you just decide you want a TP, like, already. Hmm. I think something happens. Maybe they get low or something. I think there's a... Well, you TP, like, Not right totally now, sure. Right? Oh, no, you, you come to this camp. You're doomed, doomed, the mag. Okay, all right. Yeah, I kind of, okay. I kind of see this. It looks like it's going well. I don't, I don't hate this. I don't hate this. Oh, man. That is really unfortunate. Yeah, pretty chaotic fight. The one thing I would say is I think your target prioritization here is not good. I think right here, I think you need to blink on the Oracle. 
this orb yeah. right here, you should definitely blink on this guy. Like, he is the one that you can fuck with the most. Yeah. And, like, he also is, like, used all of his shit already. Because if you just, like, kill this guy off to the side, right, while this other stuff is happening... Yeah. Then, you know, he's not, like, sitting here, like, saving people. Getting a, He's getting a bunch of spells off. You know what I mean? Like, his Oracle is having yeah. big impact right now. Yeah. Like, you could have just completely taken him out of fight. And, like, he does die, and this doesn't go terribly. Um, but just identifying, like, who should I be jumping on as carry, right? Sometimes right. you just be running in, hitting whoever's closest. But, like, on heroes like yeah. AM, it's really, like, find those supports, right? That guy was, like, kind of out of position. And you could have punished right. him pretty hard. Hold on, hold on, hold on. So we win a fight. This is bad. This is very bad. So we win the fight. We don't get the Ricky. It's really important to not, like, just walk back here on the side of the map here. Um, like, I would, like, farm these camps. Push this lane in. Like, there's another creep wave, like, right here. It's about to be here. Keep this in, and then, like, just keep farming up here in this area. Yeah, I guess I didn't want to go because I felt the same. Like I felt like I was, it was inefficient because my team was also with me, so I wanted to like go back to my triangle. They are, but like right, this is like a doom with no resources and an inch. Right, this isn't the yeah. same as like, it's it's a you're you're right. You sort of have a point, right? It's like kind of like what we talked about with Lesh earlier, uh, but it's just yeah. different because it's not a Lesh with full HP and mana trying to farm, right? Yes. Good thought. Uh, good thought. But yeah. Um, really should be you farming up there. Yeah, I really don't like this decision. I think the alternative, if you're gonna, if you're, even if, say that, say you did have a Lesh, right? And that's what, and it was, like, you were gonna let him have this farm, right? Yes. Your alternative needs to be to, like, keep the map pressure in any way you can. So, like, to right. me, that would be, like, you can even, like, drop your Mantle Illusions mid or something, or you can just do yeah. it yourself. And then I would, like, blink bottom and, like, shove this out and relieve a little bit of pressure before, like, farming your way back towards top. Right. Like, walking backwards to your own jungle is, like, the worst thing you can do. And there's, like, a creep wave, like, right here that you could have cleared, which we can't see. Right. These stupid replay bugs. Um, but it's all about getting these creep waves in, right? And you just walk to no creep wave. Yeah. This, this is very sad to see as an AM. Well, I'm not, no, I'm not a big AM player, but... Um, that's what you should be looking to do in this scenario, right? Like, why is this pushed onto your side of the river when you're all five alive and they still have heroes dead, right? Uh, yeah. Why are we letting this happen? Like, they they lost the fight, and the net result is, like, granted, their top lane is not great, but, like, it's, you know, it's not hitting their tower, which it could be if yeah. you had gone up there instead of Doom. And their mid, like, is pushed in more than you somehow, right? Yeah. Because um, you TP'd here... Or not UTP. You walk backwards to farm, and then your lash like walked bottom, and like yeah. farming. It's not all your fault, but uh, you know, we're focusing on the part that is. Yeah. So, yeah. Like they somehow have all the map control after like losing a fight. Granted, your doom should have reset. Also, kind of sucks that he's just walking around with no health and mana, but can't control that. Um. So we see them all top here. So like, what should you be doing? You have to push out the waves to maintain rush control. Like specifically though, like right now, like you see them all top. What you should, what should you do right now? Blink towards mid. Blink towards mid. You gotta blink towards mid here. You gotta push this lane out. Yeah. Yeah, like nothing's happening. Nothing's happening. Lesh slowly makes its way there. You're like walking where you see this Ricky. You're fucking nuts, dude. You're a psycho. Like you, <laughs> you, you should. What? That's all I can say. What? What's happening? Yeah, that's pretty bad. Yeah. Right. Like, how do how does how does every fight how does AM want every fight to go? Like every fight in the entire game after like fifteen minutes. How does AM want those fights to go? He doesn't want to be gone on. He doesn't want to be gone on, right? Like, what fights does AM show up to? Uh, he shows up at the end, like to clean up. At the end to clean up, or like to put it slightly more generally, when a fight has already started and he decides it looks good to show up to. Yeah. Right. You sh AM should never be at the start of any fight, ever. Right. right? Because there's right. your ability to control the map, like and be mobile and hard to kill. 
means that there's so much you can do as an AM that's not being at this fight when it starts. And if yeah. you're sitting around waiting for a fight to start as AM, you're just straight up playing the hero wrong. Um, yeah. Because your hero's job is to like keep waves shoved in, split them up, ideally, right? Just like we talked yes. about in the Luna game last time. If we keep yes. the pressure on the side lanes, we split them up, and then we take the fight. That's yeah. that's the only fights AM want to take. So like the yeah. whole, the whole you hang around here is just it just doesn't make sense. Like this isn't how AM wants to play, right? You're not a Sven with God strength and blink. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this, this is just psycho shit. I can't believe you didn't die here. It's a good manta. Uh, but even here, like, I'd be getting the fuck out of here. I'd be blinking my way straight towards mid, or if I don't see them for 20 seconds. You know, it would take me 15 seconds to get here, and I don't see them the whole time. Maybe I won't hit mid, right? But I, I'll, yeah. I, I'll, like, keep blinking bottom. I'll just, like, blink straight this way and pressure this yeah. lane until, like, they do something, and I decide if I want to react to it or not. Yeah, because they're just sitting here. Like, you don't want to be doing this shit. Yeah, I mean, this is, what are you doing? You're just waiting to get gone on, basically, is what's happening here. Like, you just don't yeah. want to be here. So, yeah, this this is a pretty big, like, kind of just mistaken gameplay concept. And, like, you, I, it sounds like you're agreeing with me, right? You kind of know what I mean. Yeah. This is not what you want to be doing on AM, right? They just yeah. get a free objective... No, I snatched the AM. Nice AM. AM. <laughs> and the nice, uh, nice snatch. That's, you know, pretty game winning. Yeah. But, like, <laughs> like, the odds that this goes like this are so low, yeah. right? Yeah, they're, so they're really low. small. That is like <laughs> one in a hundred that that fight goes as well as that does. Yeah. yeah. Um, so, you know, cool, cool. But, like, obviously, we can tell that that was not, um, not yeah, super that was not ideal. Planned. Yeah. Um, and so here, this is important. This is important. So we walk towards mid, right? We won the fight. And you're walking towards mid, which I like. However, you are the mobile hero. And your Lesh is here. So yes. this is not about farm, necessarily. Although it's like, it, the, he won't get the farm right, and you will. But, like, you, you, can, can, you can fix any lane on the map, right? Like from yes. this Roche fight, you're you can fix any lane on the map. Like whatever you want to do, you can fix it. Yeah. So what should you do here? Think top. Yeah, I would go top and shove this all the way in, while yeah. and let your team push in mid. And hopefully your team does push in mid, right? If they like, if your team just all like fucking didn't do jack shit, you know, it's like what can yeah. you do, right? Somebody should push yeah. in mid here. Um, and I don't like you have the right idea. But just because you're the mobile split pushing hero, you should have pushed in this lane and let your team do this. And you can easily push this out fast and then reconnect with them before they're alive. And yes. the net result of this is we get their tower. Do you need to be there to get that tower? No. No, not really. The net result of this is, okay, well, Pudge dies, but your doom's not here, right? Like if no. that Pudge hadn't fed, yeah. say this Pudge doesn't feed and Ricky's respawning right now, like, say they start a fight with Pudge alive and Ricky respawning right now on you guys at this tower, right? It was, yeah, your dude would not be here, and it would be your fault if you think about it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yes. So these are the types of, like, things that can happen when you don't, like, push out the right lane, is that your doom can be, like, way out of position and it's your fault, right? Which is yeah. kind of weird, because if you did lose this fight, your average person would be mad at their doom right they're like yeah, doom what are yeah. you doing right but that's your fault that he's there yeah you know and you're yes. and you're not so something to think about really important like the decisions you make after you win a team fight are super important and people get them wrong all the fucking time and if you right. do them right consistently you'll you will like as the carry you control almost like what your team does after a fight by you doing the right thing like it makes it obvious to them what they should be doing and if you get yeah. it wrong, it can really fuck your team. Um, yeah. It's kind of crazy, actually. Okay, so we're hanging around with our team again. You do have Aegis. This is, like, a little different than the normal AM, right? If you're not here when the fight starts with the Aegis, then that's, like, kind of weird. Yeah. So I actually don't mind that you're here kind of looking for this fight to start because you have the Aegis. Unfortunately, it seems to start very bad. Let's see what happens. 
Oh man, we're psycho blinking. That was a nice uh, spell reflect on my oracle though. Okay, so kind of traded evenly, which isn't really ideal because you had the Aegis, but it started really bad. So all things considered, that didn't go too bad. Yeah, oh, I just shit. got crit. I got oh. critted by the data list. Yeah, I was not expecting to die here. Yeah, that's tough. I. Okay, well, you ha it is a three on two. You did lose three heroes and they only lost two. So I think that should be your key that, like, this did not go well. Yeah. Um, I wouldn't have expected you to die that way either. But. Um, like, given this, right? In hindsight, yeah. obviously. Like, I, I totally get you weren't expecting to die there. In hindsight, would have been. Yeah, I should have run. Out. Yeah. So that's unfortunate. But other, otherwise, you know. Oh man, that's a rip. That was just pretty unlucky from you guys. Yeah. Andrew's a little out of position, but that wasn't your fault. When the fight starts with your supports dying, that's like not the best fights. But you had the Aegis, so it wasn't like you guys like totally like forced it right. It's like you wanted to take that fight anyways. Yeah. All right. So what do you do on respawn? Your bottom. I like this. I like this a lot. You see Ricky, so I'd be a little more aggressive about pushing it out. You still see Ricky. I would still be bottom. I would 100% right. still be bottom because I see this Ricky and I'm just trying to yeah. get my lanes out. Because uh, the more you get your lanes out, the more they'll split up. Uh, okay, so like you guys kind of like beta fight, looks like. I think this is. I don't know whose scan this is. Okay. Oracle's in position to get a good save. Yeah, it doesn't go well for your team. You recognize that. This is good. Push in mid, good. Thought you weren't gonna push in mid for a second. Keep pushing in mid. Yeah, because you see them all on the map still, you should definitely be pushing in mid with your main hero. Like you're doing it again. You're you're walking back to jungle. You have full information that you don't need to be doing this. Yeah. Right? You clear this with your hero, and then you, like, get this camp, and then when this yeah. spawns, assuming that they're still, like, down here, you see them on the ward or something, you clear this next camp, and then you, like, can farm backwards at that point, take the outpost yeah. or whatever. You're just going to have full information. You're just doing... You're just... This is just a complete waste of time. I mean, there's not even a fucking camp here for you to hit, which sucks. <laughs> yeah. Um... But like, what a waste of time, right? Like, this yes. Ricky's still showing bottom. You could still be mid, right? Yeah. Pudge is dead. They literally can't kill you if Ricky's not there. Um, so you're going Basher. So you went BK. Well, I didn't even think about the BKB. So you went Manta. You went BKB. I guess you kind of need a BKB. So Ricky Cloud's too big of a problem. Unfortunately, you're just going to get, like, RP'd and shit. They have a bunch of shit you have to worry about this game, which sucks. You go Abyssal. The Abyssal's not bad, but the point with this Abyssal is, like, you need to be jumping the Oracle, right? Like, yeah. that's what you... That's what your job is in fights this game. Oh, wait, we went back too far. I want to watch this next fight, actually, and watch exactly how this goes. Because you guys jumped the Ricky because... You have vision of them, and you—I think you get the hex. Yeah, he got saved by the oracle. He got saved by the oracle, but he was the f well. So he was the first one you had eyes on. So it's like, yeah. So you're here. So the Ricky walks up. Yeah, and just a little bit of patience here to not jump on this Ricky, right? Because you're probably not like. Killing him full to zero. Yeah. Fortunately, we didn't get the Doom off on Ricky. That would have been nice. But, like, a little bit of patience, right? And then you see this. Because this is, like, a half yeah. second after you blinked. You blink Manted. Right? And you yeah. just jump this Oracle and Manta him. And this fight's yeah. totally different. Right? Yeah. So, it's about identifying, like, what your job is in the fight. And making sure you're patient about it. AM's, AM's a really hard hero to, like... Or he's a... He's a good hero to practice this on, because if you're doing it wrong as AM, fights are going to yeah. suck. Um, but you can yeah. be really effective if you do it right, you know? Does yeah. Oracle have any defense? He has a four staff, but, like, you know, you're an AM, right? You're just going to chase him anyways. So. Um, yeah, 
have a target priority there would have been would have been important. I don't remember what caused me to look at that. Oh, because you're talking about this Abyssal, right? This Abyssal is like to jump on Oracle and kill him. Like you solo kill this Oracle if you jump Manta, Abyssal, and then ult. Like he just dies. Um, yeah. So like that just needs to be like your play, like every fight. Right. Map's a little dark. You see Ricky bottom. It's like really, every time his Ricky shows is like super important for you to like um, get the most out of the map. It's like, what could we have done a little bit differently here given that we saw him? So we are hitting this and we see him. Like I, I would just immediately like blink towards like we killed this camp we see him i would like immediately blink towards mid here i right. think or like i would be like trying to push this in and then even like cut this wave right like just go do some psycho shit if you see the ricky on the other side of the map right um because you have a lot of information here and am can get so much done if he has information like yeah. a, another creep camp just spawn or another creep wave just spawn it's really important to like be aware of these timings like if yes. you're right here killing this wave right now matters a lot like, yeah, because this wave's dead. This wave's already dead. So these creeps are like almost at this tier three tower already. Yes. And you could even be there. I mean, you have like fucking full vision of a ton of heroes. And you could have killed this at 305. And then you could have blinked like twice and you could have like killed this wave that's like right here right now. Which like, yeah. you know, Lesh is like kind of getting, but um, like you're, you're just so mobile, right? You end up chasing it down anyways. You're TPing bottom. I don't like this TP. This TP isn't necessarily bad, but you just haven't seen... You only have seen Oracle show here. Yeah. Like, their Ricky could still be down here. Granted, you do have very good vision with the sentries, but, like, their Ricky and Pudge could just be, like, sitting here waiting for somebody to show up. Like, that's something the high-level yeah. players will do, is they'll push, push out the map, and then they'll push in a lane, and then they'll just sit here and wait and see if anybody shows up. So this yeah. TP is, like, super dangerous... Granted, you didn't have a ton of camps to farm, but uh, you could have farmed your triangle, maybe. Yeah. And now you see the Pudge and Mag and Ricky. And, like, now, at this point, obviously this TP makes sense. But, like, if they hadn't left, right, this TP would have been really bad. You just didn't really yeah. have good information when you made the TP. Yes. So, like, sometimes that TP will, like, you know, fucking lose you the game because you'll, like, feed for no reason. You'll be like, oh, I guess they were sitting there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you farm this with the Manta. I think it's reasonable. You have, like, no information now. I'm like, kind of okay with what you're doing here. It's like... They haven't shown it all. Okay, so Ricky just showed mid. Yeah, so with Ricky showing mid, again, I like... That's super important information. So, like, I would just straight blink top right now. Like, I want to fucking cut whatever this next wave is that's coming uh, with this yeah. guy showing mid, right? Or And maybe you made a fight on you with the Ricky not being there or something. I don't think you die to any of them without Ricky being there. He's, like, all the damage they have against you. Because, yeah, instead we're just sitting here, like, you could be pushing out this top lane. Yeah. still showing mid damn this guy is just like sitting showing on mid and you're just like kind of not taking advantage of this information he's giving you right and you're just hanging around with your team again and we just want to be like split pushing these waves if at all possible like if, if like before you had no idea where they were right and i was totally yeah. chill with you just like kind of not doing anything waiting for information and then as soon as you have that information like i wanted to see you know, I wanted to see you act on the information. We're just, like, kind of not seeing you act on the information that they're giving you. Yeah. Um, so the patience is good, and then... And then we're just, like, kind of slow to react on the information that we get. Going on the Ricky again. No detection. BKB doesn't work. Yeah, so here again, like, I was kind of like, oh, maybe he's, like, waiting to go on Oracle, right? Like, the Oracle's over here. We see him. Yeah. Like, you yeah. gotta go on this guy. Like, fuck your inch, dude. Like, fuck your yeah. inch is not your yeah. job if the edge dies so fucking be it dude you need to be killing this guy this guy is your only job yeah because uh, you just don't kill this ricky you just don't 
Um, like your Doom, Doom's Ricky. Your Lesh can kill Ricky with the damage. Like your damage does not kill Ricky. Um, yes. And you know, we see what happens. Yeah. Watch a little bit more. Yeah. He's got one Rex. We have an Abyssal. We're going Scotty. Scotty's like okay. Is there any other item we could buy? It's. Scotty's good AM item. I think you'd have to go something like, I think your only options, like Scotty's okay, but it doesn't solve any problems. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like this Ricky still does exactly what it did do if you have a Scotty. And like, yeah. if you're, even if you were playing correctly and targeting the Oracle every fight, like the Scotty's not really going to change that, right? Yeah. Um... So I don't think Scotty like changes anything that's happening about this game. So my thought is like you need to give yourself some more utility to like right. mix up the fights a little bit or you need to like kind of go some sort of more defensive-ish item. Like some defensive-ish item that like helps against the Ricky. So my thoughts are like Bloodthorn because um, right. that would like kind of give you a way to fight back against the Ricky, right? If he can't like, if he can't trick to the trade you and he can't blink strike you and get behind you and you're just hitting him and he's hitting you from the front like maybe yeah. that helps right yes. and you're and you're critting him obviously he doesn't have a bp yeah. he can't get rid of this shit um like a bloodthorn yep. um maybe you need something like ac is pretty trash um it's i don't think it's it's gonna give you 15 armor and i still don't think that's gonna help yeah uh, it wouldn't hurt um the butterfly could be good to like just get some evasion and this isn't like so you can man fight the ricky but it's just so he doesn't kill you quite as fast you know these right. are the kinds of items that i would be thinking to get in a situation is like either like survive against a ricky or like give myself some way to like fight back which i think the bloodthorn is like the only item that really does that for you right because like silver edge is weird on am but like i'm trying to think if that would help i don't think it would yeah. Um, yeah, I do get the blood thorn, but after Scotty. Yeah. And you can even get like a blink, right? You can even get like a swift blink just to like jump yeah. on this Oracle, Oracle and like give it back. <laughs> you give yourself even more mobility. Or like a Lincoln's would be good for the Pudge. Yeah. Um, and eventually this guy's going to have Abyssal. He doesn't yet. But it, it's not a great Lincoln's game. I would think yeah. like Bloodthorn or Butterfly here. And it's hard. Or, or, um,. Aghanims is decent because then like you don't have to commit on the Ricky or like you can blink illusions on them. Right. I don't think it's that great this game. I honestly I haven't played AM with the Ags ever, so I don't know when it's good and when it's not. But it's like something to like yeah, me neither. give utility versus just like a Scotty just doesn't change anything. You know what I mean? Versus just, like yeah. something like an Ags would change it a little bit. I don't know if it'd be worth the money, but yeah. Yeah. That's my thought process on the items that you're going. Right. Um, and again, we saw the same thing with like the target priority. So I like what you're doing here, split pushing. This TP is the same as last game. Yeah. It's the exact same. They have not forced anything to happen yet. Like, um, you gave up free pressure and farm out on the map to like come back yeah. to nothing. Like, right? You don't want to be. You don't need to be here right when the fight starts. And you ideally would like to keep this pressure on and like have somebody on their team TP back or like have your team start some sort of advantageous fight because yeah. there's two scenarios, right? For like how this fight, if it happens, is eventually going to go. Scenario A is it starts good for them. They get a good hook, whatever, instantly blow somebody on your team up. Do you want to come yeah. back and TP back in that scenario? No. No. Scenario, so you, and, and does you being here change the outcome, like, if that happens? No. No. So, like, if you, and the other option is the fight starts good for you guys. Like, you 
get like a lesh stun into like fucking blink doom the ricky or some shit um yeah you know like if your team's good sometimes they'll surprise you, you know like maybe it's maybe ricky's aegis maybe ricky loses this aegis for free before you've even tb'd back right your team just gets like yeah. a lion finger lesh combo something right yeah then the fight has started good then you can be like oh now i can tp back like we have some sort of like advantage or you know they'll right. like have overextended your base something 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 you get what i'm saying right right there's right. no scenario in which you being here in advance is going to make it it's not going to change whether you are eventually going to want to come back or not and in the meantime you're just giving up everything you're giving up everything right. um yeah i like that you like clear mid here but this is exactly what i mean oh you blinked on the oracle oh my goodness <laughs> yeah. Let's watch this in slow motion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my god. Wow. Amazing. Amazing. Looks like unfortunately this fight started good for you but also good for them. Yeah. Um I shall restore the No, no, you know, this is going alright. You know, your lesh had to buy? Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Oh my. Wow. That uh that Ricky is huge. So that fight went okay. And you know yeah. why it went okay? I mean, it didn't go great. Your lush die back. But, like, right? You didn't just lose the game, right? You almost killed Pudge. Yeah. You killed two. It's because you got the Oracle. You did your job, right? Um, yeah. You did your job. And if your inch hadn't got hooked, if you had found that blink go, like, without your inch getting hooked, like, you guys then proceed to, like, crush that fight, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Unfortunately, your inch got hooked, which, you know, it's like, what can you do? But that was, yeah. great. that was a great demonstration of, like, when you do your job in the fight, like, things, like, just work out. Yeah. Oh, did we kill them all here? Nice. Wow, look at how easy life is when the Oracle's not alive. Yep. Holy moly. All right. Win a team fight. What do we do? We're going to wrap up after this, after we okay. figure out what we do after this fight. Okay, so we blink cleared that. We're going to clear mid. We're like the only person on our team that clears mid effectively, so good, good, good. Blink down mid. Blink down mid. Do it faster. Farming camp yeah i don't like this um it's not bad but like your doom can get this tower without you i want you to be clearing this wave and yeah. not not having your team have to worry about this and then i also need this outpost to be taken so that lesh can be back i thought that's what you're gonna do and i was gonna be like oh i right. like it that you're keeping that or that you're taking this outpost but that's not what you're doing right. um, the outpost is really important i guess your lesh has bots okay it's like whatever so you get so you get a lane you get a lane mid i would like to be pushed in though right i don't want this happening i want this here right and then we have even more information than we do less sheep's bottom yeah but then we like just kind of immediately give up like our side of the map or their side of the map is what i mean right this is not a good ward but like what you guys should want where's your vision like, you guys should, like, have warded this hill. Ob's warded. Sentry down here. And, like, you yeah. guys should just be posted up here, cutting these two waves, and, like, daring them to walk into you. Right? Right. And, like, especially if your team can do that, and if you can, like, kind of sneak over and, like, be split pushing this lane in um, with the ability to TP this outpost or something, right? That's, like, right. kind of the setup that you guys should want to have, given... Uh, given the position you're in right here so they're still dead right they, they can't like immediately fight you right now this lane needs to be pushed in then you need to drop a ward and a sentry take the outpost and then you know somebody like pushes in this lane again if it gets to like here right if they clear it right in front of their base like you know you don't really want to go on them if they're like right in front of their base right but they clear it yeah. here. You clear it right here, right? They don't really want to extend out to this point. If they do, you fight them. And then the top is going to keep shoving in, and you're going to control this wave. And then that gives you a ton of options. Like, you can farm, you can smoke and run in their triangle, or you just wait for Roche to spawn again. It's like a really long time away. But, you know, that's how you yes. want to be set up in these situations. And instead, like, that's what an immortal team will do here. Because they're like, yeah. why the hell are we going to let these guys out of their fucking base? We have Doom, right? We have Doom. Yeah. We've got everything. We've got map control. Like, why are we giving up 
you know like if we just watch yeah. eight seconds right all right boom we're on where where did our map control go yeah it's, it's gone. gone we don't know where they are we don't know what they're doing we're not controlling you know mid which is the most important wave yeah you know and you just made this game like so hard for yourselves just by like backing off and this this is this is pretty advanced concepts like your legend one yeah you got to start thinking about this you're not going to be doing it well but like to like be like a mid divine player like pushing a mortal you got to do this right um so you need to right. be you need to be thinking about it now um and if you know if you tell your team if you tell your team hey ward this and sit here under the ward and keep these two lanes pushed in if you tell your team that and they don't do it like so be it right so be yeah. it they're yeah. not always going to do it but if you yeah. know that that's correct to do you can tell your team they will do it sometimes and then your chances of winning those games where they listen to you will be way higher than they are doing whatever the fuck this is right you know four heroes right. defensively farming because you have no idea where they are it's because you just like freely gave up the good positioning you had yes all right man you have any questions no, I guess uh, the uh, the only question I had was uh, if I summarize this thing as um, my farming is okay, but I might need to focus more on like stuff that we talked about, like mid game decision making. Um, I think that's that's the thing to focus on. Would that be correct? From this game, right? Uh, from both games. Yeah, I in general, yeah. Um, farming decisions. Your your no, your farming was good. You had a couple bad TPs back to your base. Um, you In that Luna game, you didn't really fight on your timings. This game, it wasn't so much about fighting on your timings. It was more about like executing your job in the team fight and identifying what that is, right? Jumping the Oracle. A lot of fights did not go well because we never jumped the Oracle, right? Um, yes. And then, I don't know. I feel like the lessons from the two games are really different, which is why I actually yeah. enjoyed this because we got to talk about totally different stuff that it's also really important in this game. Um, yeah, because this game was about that. We saw some of the same mistakes of TPing back to your base without being forced to. Um, yeah. And then, like, what you do after one team fights, right? What lanes are we controlling? And make sure we're not, like, going back to our own side of the map. And make sure that if you're the mobile hero, you go to, the, like, the side lane that's further away to push it in, you know? And sometimes you're going to be the less mobile hero. And in that case, you do need to just run straight to the closest lane and, like, get it shoved in. Yes. Um, so I did record these. So I will. Yeah. Um, were you somebody who signed up for a session recently said they didn't want it on YouTube? Is that you? No, no, that's not me. I okay. would like it so on YouTube. I'll, I'll upload it. I, I I have to upload it either way to share it with you, but I'll I'll make it public. But I'll get that up in the next couple of days and send you the link sure. so you can rewatch it, which I highly recommend you do. Yeah. And uh, and yeah, good luck, man. Good luck going forward. Get that MMR. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, I learned a lot. Thank you. All right, sick man. Talk to you later. Talk to you later. Bye. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, sub to the channel. And if you want to be coached by me, check the link in the video description. You can join my Discord there, and there's all the information there on how to sign up.